Hey, what's up, guys? Professor Breaker is here, and this is gonna be part three of the guide series. And in today's video, we're gonna cover the mid lane. And hopefully, by the end of the video, you guys are experts, or you guys uh, know some tips here and there on how you guys can improve in the mid lane. Um, Merry Christmas! Uh, I think by the time you're watching this video, it will be 26, maybe a little bit too late, but hey. I got you covered with a giveaway. Um, I think it's gonna be for five people up to 1k or something, or maybe 1.3k for the legendary skin. Uh, what you guys need to do is just leave a like, subscribe, and write down in the comments what what did you guys do? What did you guys get for Christmas? How did you guys spend the time uh, with the family? And very important, write down your Discord tag if you guys want to participate. And yeah, let's get started. So I think a lot of people assume I only play Baron lane and jungle, but I actually have a lot of experience in the mid lane as well. Um, from LOL PC, I played LOL PC for like four or five years, so I've got a lot of experience from there. But to be honest, I was like, I reached Challenger and PC, but I played mainly Shivana and sometimes top lane. But I played a lot of mid lanes. For our realm, dominion stuff like that, so I I know how the how the champions work and how the macro works for the mid lane. So hopefully I can give you a bunch of tips for that one. And then afterwards we will probably do ADC and then support. But yeah, let's get started. So how are we gonna divide the video? If you guys are wondering why I'm looking there, um, my note my notepad. So number one will be mid lane types. Then what's your job as a mid laner? How to lane as a mid laner? Uh, we're gonna talk about matchups actually this time. Mage versus mage, mage versus ADC slash assassin, and the other vice versa matchup AD versus mage. Or AD, you could also say AD versus assassin, or AD versus AD assassin versus mage, but uh, I mean in the end it's very similar, it doesn't really matter. And then how to win the game, I think it might overlap a little bit with a what's your job, but I will try to differentiate as as well as possible. And then number five, how to improve yourself as a mid laner. So let's go. Mid lane types. I've divided it into four four sub points. Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, four sub points. So 1.1 we have typical standard mages utility slash pop mages uh, for example ariana vega zix but um i guess there's like one exception who is more like a tank ap um galio but i didn't want to put him like full tank because a lot of people just built him full ap but he's like one of those melee tanky ap champions but most of the times the typical standard mages are uh, poking mages, staying long range, and having tons of damage. So what's the advantage of those champions? They have tons of damage. They keep their distance in team fights. Um, but the downside is they're very squishy, and all the assassins, all the bruisers will try to jump into the backline trying to kill you. So yeah, it depends. On the one hand, you have tons of damage, and on the other hand, you're super squishy and you can get killed very easily. So it's up to you what type of mage you prefer. And then 1.2 is Assassins. For Assassins, I have Zed, Akali, Fizz, Ari, Diana, and Katarina. Those are the typical Assassins. And Assassins are... Like the name suggests, they just jump in, kill you, jump out again. Best example is Zed, who just goes in, one-shots you, goes out again. Like those champions are very squishy, but the kill potential is insane. 1.3 ADCs, I think the top ADCs in the mid lane are definitely Corky, Lucian, Akshan. Um, all three pretty strong in the S tier. And then 1.4 are the typical AD champions, for example, Aurelia, Yasuo, um, Riven, Pantheon, Renekton, stuff like that. So I think main and Jace, 
Main AD champions in the mid lane are Aurelia, Yasuo and Jace most of the times. But there are some situational champions like Fiora, Riven, Renekton that can also be played in the mid lane. Also Camille, they all can be played into the mid lane in some cases where you have AP damage in the jungle or in the top lane or as APC in the bot lane. And then they also can be good into certain matchups where they can snowball or dominate in the early game. But yeah, mid lane types, try to summarize it pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think that's very important for you guys to know, but hey, maybe you guys can decide what type of mid lane you are, what type of champions you prefer. And then 2.0, what's your job as a mid laner? Let's see, what did I write down? Wave control. Uh, and with wave control comes mid wave clearance, lane priority for rotation in terms of objectives, gangs, early skirmishes. And you always want to clear the wave for a gang of objectives. And then also catching people, trapping people in bush, since people rotate through the river to the mid lane. So let's get started with wave control. And we have this two right here. Epic pen. So hopefully I will first time using it. Hopefully I'm not gonna mess it up. Okay, let's check something really quick. It looks kinda scuffed because you guys can see this outer. But if I go full, I can't use this one. It's so scuffed. I'm gonna use it like this. I'm just gonna use it like this. So number one, wave control. As a mid laner, I think it's pretty simple compared to a baron laner, where you wanna set up freezes sometimes, you wanna set up hard shafts. It applies also for the mid lane, but not as hard because, um, or as much because look at the the distance is just like here. Look at the distance. The distance is so fucking big. The the lane here is so short in comparison. Like the wave will bounce back and forth super easily, or uh, it will reset very quickly compared to Baron lane where you can freeze forever. And as mid laner, I would not necessarily recommend freezing. I mean, it depends on the situation. So, you guys know when does the scuttle spawn here? The big, juicy scuttle where every jungle wants to fight. It's 1, 20, oh god. Ah, I can't write here. 125, hey. I think you guys can see it. So at 125, the scuttle spawns. And then, question is, what champion are you playing? What champion is your jungle uh, jungler playing? And can you win the two versus two situation? It looks so bad. <laughs> Whatever. Deal with it. So can you guys win the two versus two situation? Then if you think, okay, I can win the two versus two situation, I can help my jungler out. And then you have to think about your own matchup as well. Does it make sense to hard shove the wave so I can join the scuttle team fight, for example? Or hard shove to gank early on? Because... Some champions like to gank early on or help to invade. So, depending on your matchup, you have two options. Some people like to freeze the wave here at this point. Here at this point, they want to have the wave here. So the opponent is kind of too far forward. Like the opponent is right here then. In the middle of the lane, overextended. And then your lovely jungler can come from here. Gank. I'll come from here, for example, over this, or from here, from far behind, if the opponent is overextended. That's the whole point of freezing, for example. Um, number one point is you want you want to you want the wave to sit there in a bad matchup so you can farm up safely. Option two is you want the wave to be there so it's more easily for your jungler to collapse on the enemy opponent who has to overstay in the lane right here at this point. Because if they are at that point, they are overextended in the lane because otherwise they won't get the gold or the experience coming from the wave if you set up a freeze. The thing is, if you guys want to do that, it's either before the scuttle spawns. Most of the times people won't collapse on you when you're doing this. So only at least Sin, Javan or maybe Evelyn will gank pre-level 2 to do this kind of play. But majority of the time, if you guys really want to do this, maybe do it after a scuttle fight. Because then between the time 125 and 4 minutes for the next big objective, 
So the next big objective would have been 4-0-0-0-4. This lovely boy, the Herald, and the Dragon. It looks really bad, but hey, deal with it. <laughs> Paint Breakup. Professor Breakup with a painting. Um, so yeah, I think the, the freezing part you can do if you guys want to between 125 and 400. But if you do it right before, the enemy, the enemy mid laner is like, hey, hey, I will have Pryo because I shoved the wave in and he's freezing. So he's not going to join the scuttle team fight, which is here. Actually, we can just clear here. So let's assume, like I said, you're freezing right here. But it's right before 125. The enemy, the enemy is like, hey, it's free real estate. I'm just going to join the scuttle team fight here. Or I'm just going to join here. It's free. While you're just here sitting, trying to farm and chilling, like a lot of mid laners, they don't know what lane priority is. Lane priority is when you have pressure on the opponent by harassing them, by shoving in the wave, so they will be later than you, priority, so you're earlier than the opponent adjoining the next uh, skirmish, which would be 125 at Scuttle. So what would I recommend? Before 125, the time is 125. Oh god, you wanna shove in the wave, so it's gonna be here. It's gonna be here at this point. <laughs> so, and then, you're so good! Like, let's say, it's dead not clear, he's like doing... The jungler's doing this, he's doing this, he's going this, and then he wants to be here. Enemy jungler is listen, he's like, I got this, I got this, I got this, and then I'm gonna come for that blue buff. Or I'm gonna collapse on the scuttle. I look so bad actually. So the enemy jungler is like, I will come for the scuttle as well. And if you have Pryo, your enemy, the enemy laner will be sitting here. And you shoved the wave already at this point. So he has to clear the wave. And if he doesn't clear the wave, he will lose minions. I mean, obviously he can come here without clearing the minions. But he's gonna, the whole minion wave is gonna crash under the turret. Right here. It's gonna crash, and even if this guy is gonna come, he's gonna lose minions, or if he doesn't come and he wants to clear this, you will be here, uh, you're like, oh, I'm quicker, I'm gonna help my jungle out, I'm such a good guy. Let's go! Hey! <laughs> Woohoo! And your, your jungler is like, thank you very much for that help! And let's say they're fighting a one versus one. They're fighting one versus one, but you are coming, and it's a one versus two. GG, first blood for you guys. Hey, it's a win. <laughs> and the other guy's too late. And obviously it depends on the matchup. But most of the times, if you are not a weak champion, you're on an AD, you're on an assassin, you are on Galio, Diana, etc. You should come for the early skirmish. I mean, obviously there are some scenarios where you won't have prior, you will come later. But even if you come later, it's better than not coming at all. It depends on the two versus two. Like this case where you want the lane prior to come is when you assume you have the better two versus two. So number one condition two versus two, you're better and you think you can collapse and you, you think you can win. But trust me, um, this only applies for high elo where you assume that the enemy is gonna come as well and it's gonna be a two versus two situation. Let's say, but most of the times in low elo, or anything below diamond, for example. If you have lane prio, the other is probably not going to respond because they have no idea about lane prio. They're not going to come anyways. So, if you do this tip, shove the wave before 125. So, before 125. Oh god, it looks so bad. You want to hard shove the wave into the turret and then you come for that scuttle. I mean, it depends on which side your jungler is. Hey. Also, if you see, this is just the lame prior stuff when it comes to scuttle fights, but there's also another thing. If you see that this bitch is overextended, you see these bitches are overextended. I'm talking about the enemy lane opponent. You can chop the wave as well here, and let's assume it depends if you have scuttle, but let's assume you have a scuttle here. You get movement speed here. MS. You get MS movement speed. From that scuttle area. Then you can come quickly for quickie. 
Fuck, we get. You come for me, you gang from behind, and you get the first blood. Boom. All supplies for this direction collapse. So, as the jungler, as a mid laner, hey, it's free real estate, chop the wave. Jungle fight, 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 invade, fight, 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 gang fight, fight, fight. Just fight non stop. I mean, it depends on the champion, it doesn't apply for every single champion. Some champions, honestly, they are too weak to roam, for example, or they are too weak to um, fight this. And in these cases, in these cases, for example, if you play Lux, you might not be that strong. If you play Orianna, you might be not that strong. Or if you play against a Twisted Fate, who will out-rotate you with the ultimate. What you need to do is, you shove the wave in the mid lane here, and then you sit under the turret and chill. So this way, he always have to focus on clearing the wave and then he can roam. But it's usually people that freeze and he just shoves for free and then he's just gonna roam for free. But every single time if you play those champions, just shove the wave as hard as possible. So you want, you just clear the wave and then you hug the turret. In these cases, the danger is the jungle or the enemy support might be camping here in that area. Try to collapse on you when you try to roam. Then in these cases when you're playing those champions where you don't have vision at all, then just clear the wave and then hug in the mid lane. Man, painting breaker striking once again. For you guys might be confusing, for me it's not confusing at all. <laughs> it's confusing as well. But yeah, lane prior for... Yeah, this was just the talk about Scuttle and the same applies for the big... For those big juicy things. The Herald and the Dragon at 4 minutes. Remember, the timer is... 4... Zero. Oh god. Zero. You want to hard shove this bad boy? And let me explain why. Because you guys are fools! You have no idea! Okay, I'm just kidding. You want to clear this wave every single time, no matter what, even if they already start the team fight. Because let's assume you guys are losing this team fight, and instead of clearing this wave, which would crash into the turret, and they would lose experience, gold, and turret HP. This bad thing is gonna lose some HP. Minus HP if the wave is crashing in and it has a cannon. Oh god, I can't even read that one. Wait. Let's do it better on. I can do it better on. H. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. But the, the thing is, if you shove, always shove the wave, let's assume you lose the team fight and they wanna get that turret here. They wanna get this turret. And there is no wave anymore because you shoved it in. But if you don't shove the wave in and the wave is for example here. And it has a cannon minion. They can just clear the wave. And then they have a cannon minion after the team fight to knock on the turret and get the turret for free. So it's very important no matter what to always clear the wave. Because if you win the team fight you can uh, push the turret. And if you don't win the team fight, they will lose experience gold and they don't have the opportunity to push the turret anymore because you cleared the cannon minion wave. If it's maybe two or three minions, okay, whatever, join. But if it's a cannon minion wave, cannon minion wave, with that cannon, if they win the team fight, they will take the turret. And losing that mid turret is gonna be key. Because without that, without that protection you get from here, from that turret, they can set up so many deep wards at these spots here. They can set up a deep ward here, they can set up a deep ward here, or here, 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 etc. Like, it's, it's gonna be very easy for them to set up deep wards, gonna go for invades, and also, the enemy mid can always shove the wave super deep. Oh god, it looks super bad. Ah, I did too much. He can shove it to the tier 2, and then he can just rotate and collapse. Or they just... Try to uh, to push it together and it's gonna apply for the other side as well. So the enemy mid laner can just come from behind like this and gank or like this collapse. Once this turret is gone, you lose the whole control of the map. This turret is the number one turret you never want to lose, basically. This was just the talk about objectives, ganks. I always talk about ganks as well. Um... Clear wave into gang, scuttle, dragon, herald, or for invades as well. Um, yeah, it depends. You can sometimes also invade and try to maybe 
collapse onto the enemy jungler at the uh, big buffs or you try to steal a small camp right here like the moment they're on it you can sit here and then you just try to steal maybe like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work it really depends don't int i see a lot of people that try this play where they try to deny the opponent from some minions and then they end up just dying first blood so be careful be careful about that one And what else? Catching people, trapping people in bushes. Let's see the key the key spots. Um if you sit in this bush or in this bush or in this bush, if some people come to rotate this way, you can catch them. If someone tries to come from here trying to gank you, if you sit in one of those bushes and they don't have vision, like you need to make sure they don't have vision if you want to do this. You play with Red Trinket. If you play an Assassin and you want to do the bush camping on Ari, it's very good. Ari, Akali, Zed, so many burst, bursting base champions. You can set up, like, assuming you cleared everything here with a Red Trinket. You can sit in those bushes and catch people while they're trying to rotate, trying to gank you. Like, jungler is gonna come here. You're like, I'm sitting here. You just burst him because he doesn't expect it. Also, if a support comes to Romeo or ADC, you can do this as well. But yeah, actually, that's... What's... What else? I think I, I mentioned something like, you need to do damage in team fights, Position yourself correctly and do damage. But that's basically your job. Um, Next point is gonna be how to lane. And I think I'm just gonna run of a gameplay in the background. Instead of just doing this thing, because I don't think we're gonna need it anymore. I'm gonna talk about the matchups later, or right now, but I don't think we are gonna need the map anymore. So I'm just gonna run two gameplays while talking about the other tips. Oh yeah, guys, we are doing a mid to challenger solo queue challenge right now as well. Oh, actually, this is working as well. That's nice. Oh, I can do it like this as well while it's running. Hey, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Actually, I might use this function while we are running in the game. It's not bad, to be honest. So, how to lane? We have three major matchups. It's gonna be Mage versus Mage, Mage versus AD Assassin, and AD versus Mage Assassin. Oh, um, versus Mage. Actually, we also have the, the same... I forgot about ADCs. Mage versus ADCs. AD versus ADC. Wait, let me write it down. Oh shit, I forgot that point. I forgot ADCs! Mage... I think Mage versus ADCs, you don't really play too different. But AD versus ADCs is gonna be interesting. Yeah, I forgot that one. So, number one matchup is gonna be Mage versus Mage. So, in this case, what did I write down? Focus on last hitting. Out pushing the opponent while harassing him for lame prior. You should only push the wave in when you know a fight will happen. That's what I was talking about when it came down to knowing when to shove the wave, knowing when to arrest the opponent right before the scuttle. So, so you have lame prior and you can come for that scuttle fight. And not only for scuttle fights, it also applies for... Uh, dragon, Herald team fights, or if you guys want to roam and gank. If your wave is under the, the turret, you will lose lane prior. So, best case, you want to keep the lane at a neutral spot. And I'm almost gonna get, die to a diamond corky. Ay ay ay, I'm griefing. Anyways, let's ignore the gameplay. It's not important. The important is what I'm talking about. Listen to the lecture, guys. But yeah, I think in most cases, if you play mage versus mage... You don't necessarily focus on killing the opponent and just focus on farming. Trying to harass the opponent and then working towards lane prior where you can maybe join a team fight or something. Because I think in the mid lane, it's very easy to survive and not to die. If you just farm up safely as a mage from long range, I don't think you can ever die unless you... You can't dodge any skill shots and you get hit by every single skill shot, then you're probably gonna die, but otherwise... You should be safe every single time. 
So usually what I like to do in the mid lane is just I shove the wave, try to harass the opponent as much as possible. And if I see the window to kill him, I will try to go for the all in. But otherwise I will just try to roam for objectives or roam for ganks. But yeah, 1 vs 1 kills are definitely not necessary as a mid laner. Like it's more important to be there for team fights and come quicker than the opponent. Like in this case you can see I knew I could all in on him and that's why I just went in for it. Okay, next matchup, Mage vs AD slash Assassin. Um, in this case, I would say as a mid laner, you need to punish the ADC champion. Um, or I, I don't mean ADC, but the AD champion in the early game who doesn't have the range. And you can harass him a lot with your auto attacks alone. And whenever he comes close to a minion trying to last it, you want to hit him while he tries to last it. Or you last it while harassing him at the same time. And make sure to not take minion acro while you're using your auto attacks onto him. But every time he comes close, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. This is a great way to harass him. But you need to make sure that you don't overextend too much. Because there are some champions, AD champions like Aurelia, Riven. That are really, really good at cleaning up and killing you. So if you are overextended and they get level 2. They might be able to just go for that all in and kill you. So you need to be very cautious at how to position yourself for harassing for harassing them and not being too overextended so they can go for that all in and cheese you level 2 or level 5. So for Aurelia Riven level 2 is the danger zone. You need to be careful. And also level 5 where they can just go for that all in. You also need to be very careful. So Play aggressive and poke the opponent in the early stages, zone him from the wave if, if possible, punish him whenever he tries to come close to last it, keep your distance against certain AD champions with good all-in potential in the early game or at level 5, as that as well, level 5, very good all-in potential. And now the vice versa matchup as an AD, how do you deal with a poking champion that is gonna try to harass and zone you in the early game? Okay, from the perspective as an AD champion, Cheesy plays as a Riven level 2. Some champions like Riven and Aurelia, if you set up the wave really well, you get level 2 before them. Your all-in potential to get that Cheesy first blood level 2 is very good. So you can try to go for that play. Majority of AD champions usually like to focus on farming up safely in the early game. Don't take too much poking damage from the opponents. Um, sometimes it's better to not go for that one last hit and just go for that passive experience in gold instead of taking uh, the full poke, which will make you too low and then they can try to zone you or force you to backport and then you will lose even more gold and experience. So you have to think about when it's worth going for that last hit for Ken, for example. Or if you see they wasted their abilities onto minion to last it, then you can go for that last hit and don't take too much poking damage. But definitely make sure to not take too much poking damage whenever you try to go for last hits. And even if you lose a few minutes, it's not gonna matter too much. Okay. And wait for your power spike in terms of your ultimate. For Riven it would be level 3, you have a good power spike. Level 2 for cheesing potential, level 5 all-in potential. Find the right moment for you to all-in. And you always want to go for good trades. For example, as a Riven, you can trade within your shield. Or as a Camille as well, you can trade within your shield and then you back off after the trade. So you always want to go for positive trades. If possible, don't go for trades where you think you will take too much poke damage. And then once you poke them enough and you think you can all in, that's the opportunity when you go for that solo kill. But you obviously don't have to go for solo kills every single time. It's just a bonus. Like getting the solo kill is like the micro stuff where you're like, hey, I all play the opponent. But majority of the time, I would say it's better to play for the macro game. If you have a good macro understanding, 
that's way better than just going for micro going for the greedy solo kills because you definitely don't need the greedy solo kills you need to you need to focus on farming you need to focus on lane prio you need to focus on helping out your teammates wherever you are needed it's better than focusing on i want that solo kill i'm playing super aggressive i want that solo kill it's definitely not something you need majority of the time we could talk about i think mage versus adc is similar to mage versus uh, mage it doesn't it doesn't change too much ad versus adc is pretty much the same playstyle as ad versus mage assassin like there's no difference like ad versus a uh, long range champion it's literally the same if it's adc or mage it's no difference i don't think i need to explain something else there so how do you win the game wow how do you win the game quick summary micro macro and what did i write down micro macro team fighting i think those are the three key the uh, three key things when it comes to micro what is part of micro how good are you on your champion how good are you in the laning phase lane priority is uh yeah, yeah that's more macro yeah how good are you in the lane how good are you mechanically on your champion that's micro stuff macro stuff is like rotation lane priority um objective control turret control um switching lanes swapping between lanes Can I use this tool right here? Yeah, I could use it actually, if I need to. Hey. But I don't think I need to use the tool, so I'm gonna put it off like this. So yeah, micro, I think I already covered this in depth. Micro is, will you, will help you win the lane, get yourself ahead to snowball the game with the lead you got. And the mid lane is one of the best lanes to impact the map and carry. So if you get the lead in the mid lane because you got the solo bolo, you got a one versus one kill. With that lead, you want to extend that lead and snowball not only your own lane but also snowball the other lanes by helping them out. Wait a second, we can hop right into the next game. Okay, let's continue. Next one is gonna be macro. So when it comes to macro, what's very important? Rotation is key as mid laner. You want to be part of every single team fight, and that means you want to aim for very high team participation rate uh, or team fight rate, where you have like 70, 80, 90% team fight participation. So that's very important as mid laner, and I think it's very easy as mid laner to achieve that one. And another tip I can give you is in high elo. The moment the bot lane takes down your turret, or the bot lane turret, let's say, um, here's the bot lane, right? They take the turret, then it's very useful for them to AD and support to stay in the mid lane, and then you go here to always shove and depush the wave, where they can, um, from here, the support and AD can rotate between the lanes way easier and force fights or catch people, and it's easier for two people to secure this one if you are on a assassin or a dj like Z, for example on akali it's very good to do this sometimes it's better to stay three men in the mid lane with a poking mage ad and support and then force the mid turret but on a lot of champions it's very useful for the mid laner to split push Z, akali fiora um diana fist stuff like that maybe on a poking mage you can do this as well and hold this lane alone, one versus two, where the AD mid lane are AD and support two people versus your mid laner. Might be useful, it really depends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In high elo, usually people like to put ADC and support mid lane for better rotation. In the mid game, once the bot turret is gone, so you might sit in the bot lane depending on your champion Z, for example. If you're on a poking mage, you can sit in the mid lane and try to force the mid turret and outpoke them. Catching people as a mid laner is pretty good to get the man advantage to force objectives or team fights. 
you are also the main damage dealer in your team most of the time so it's gonna be either the adc or you who are the main damage dealers in the team comp especially if you're on a poking champion how to win the game i i think majority of the stuff that i talked about at uh, two point uh, what's your job also covers how to win the game let me think what else like just having good rotation and being part of every team fight by like you can see in this clip right here i have the prio because i shopped in the wave and now i'm already roaming on collapsing on the top lane and we get a free kill and we might be able to damage the turret a bit that's something that's very important like this is the best case where you shove the uh, shove the wave in, you have lane prior, and then instead of just going for the scuttle fight, you can also collapse and gank on the sidelines, or maybe even invade in some cases. You want to be part of everything: early skirmishes for scuttle, early skirmishes for invades, or even for just lane ganks on the side lanes. Just doing that will already help out so much at winning the game. If you are always there, where the enemy mid laner is not there because you either win the lane or you harass them hard enough and otherwise objective herald dragon er uh, elder elder dragon as well but yeah honestly i think i covered i've covered everything already for mid lane let me think real let me think if i'm missing something for how to win the game, for how to win the game. Like we still have the, we still have the point of um, how to improve. But how to win the game. Micro winning the lane to snowball, getting yourself ahead. And then impact snowball from the lane. And then try to impact and spread that snowball from the mid lane into the side lanes. That's the main thing about the mid lane. Even on poking majors, this applies the same. Especially as a poking mage, where you shove the wave and you see that no one is trapping you in a bush. Like, especially as a poking mage, when you shove the wave, you might need to be careful out of the bush because they might trap you. But if you have vision on the opponent and you see, okay, there, he's not trapping there, you can definitely roam. But otherwise, what else? I guess focus on positioning yourself correctly in team fights, Because you are very squishy. Like, if you're a poking mage, you're very squishy in teamfights. And you need to position yourself correctly in the back line, right in front of your tank. So you don't get caught by the enemy and you can do as much damage as possible. And um, synchronize your combos with the tanks where they CC and you follow up with Oriana ultimate, for example. Keep poking the opponent, harass them down, and then you can win, basically. Otherwise... There's not much more to talk about mid lane. I think mid lane is a role that is the has the second most impact right behind the jungler, and it's very easy to play. Like if you if you are not too dumb at positioning yourself and you have a good understanding of macro, you can carry a lot of games very easily. I think mid lane is one of the easiest roads to be honest. Like good impact, it's not micro reliant. Like not that micro reliant. Maybe if you play Assassin versus Assassin. But if you just focus on clearing the wave, you should be fine no matter what. Oh, I forgot to talk about... Um, if you freeze... If you freeze right here, your poking mage, you need to be careful that they don't collapse on you. Like, they can dive you if you freeze in a bad matchup where they're like Lee and Kha'Zix, and you're freezing and you're Orianna. They might to cry, come from behind and then dive you. That's definitely an option which doesn't really happen. So I think a majority of the time it's better to keep the wave at a neutral point and then only right before the objective you hard shove, try to get the lane prior, but otherwise it's better for you to keep it neutral. If you freeze, uh, you don't have lane prior, you're easy to die. And if you shove it too hard, then you are vulnerable because you're too far extended in the lane. So you always want to keep it neutral and you only shop it when it's needed by wanting to roam, wanting to gang on the sidelines or having lane prior. So yeah, that's the point. And then 
five is how to improve as mid lane how to improve that's a general tip i can give you not only for mid lane but also for every other role uh watch replays on watch your own replays to see what mistakes you did every single time what you could have done better could you have done um one versus one could you have played the lane better uh wave management could you have done that one better um lane prior could have could you have joined a team fight where you were not there or where you should have been earlier there did you position yourself correctly in team fights did you play the team fight correctly by targeting the correct persons or doing enough damage in team fights like you can obviously always check at the end of the game how much damage did you do in comparison to, to everyone else and you should always aim to be one of the highest or the highest even and then watch youtube watch youtube to learn from other people watch guides or read guides there are a lot of guides from pc version not only for wild drift which also apply in general most of the times for wild drift and then otherwise practice more to practice micro stuff like combos um etc for that for aurelia for raven you can practice micro stuff but yeah that's that covers basically it and the gameplay is gonna run for seven minutes so um let's watch this one and then let's commit for the video basically i think we we've covered pretty much everything that's the trap i'm talking about by the way hey i talk about trapping that's a position i also marked that's a position i also marked by the way that's how you can catch people now you have the man advantage and if you guys have an objective open that's a good, that's a good point or good time to go for an objective right now because you're four versus five situation And remember for the giveaway, if you guys want to participate, you need to write the Discord tag. Because otherwise, there will be people that try to fake and say, ah, that's me, that's my comment. So you need to write the Discord tag. If I, if I do the raffle and I don't see a Discord tag, you don't participate. You don't, you, don't, you don't win. That's very important, just making sure. You don't have to participate, but if, if you guys want to participate, just write down your Discord tag as well. I wonder what I will do next, AD or support? Ay ay ay, I don't know. I think I will do, maybe I will do support first. Because I have, I do have, I think I have way more experience as a support than as an AD. Like, I have so many games as support. Because I auto filled so much, not only in Wild Rift, but also on PC. But especially in Season 2. Where my MMR was super high, where I couldn't find games. I was playing support like 50 games in high elo. Because I literally couldn't find other ways. I had to auto for every game. So I do believe I have good good experience or good knowledge on how to play as support as well. So maybe I'm going to do support first and then AD. I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter too much. AD is all about um, positioning and farming up. And support is like more the macro role. I think if you're playing a tanky support, it's a very macro reliant role where you just focus on uh, rotating, trying to make plays, which is very underestimated because a lot of supports just love to hug their own lane and do nothing and AFK. But it's definitely a very playmaking role, especially in high elo. A good roaming support can carry a lot of games. Very underrated role. Even as an enchanter, you can roam, to be honest. It really depends on your. Top laner maybe, but in general, you can do a lot of plays. Even as a Jenna, Jenna is one of the best roaming champions as well. Supports very underrated, not gonna lie. Because the, the issue is supports are just so bad that everyone thinks... I mean, they are so bad, that's why everyone's like, yeah, it's a shit role. But actually, support is such a good and underrated role. It's such a good playmaking role. Like, impact-wise, it's the third best role in solo queue. It's not necessary in low elo, but in high elo, it's, it's an insane role. It's so fucking good. 
because you need people to follow you up that's the issue like, even if you make good plays if no one follows you it's like eh whatever but trust me support can be so rewarding when you do one verse for knock up on Alistair and everyone else follows up and then you just kill them all oh the flash ah yeah 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 unlucky Die. Yes, we got a kill. Swatchin. The KS, the KS, I'm here. Let's go. This is this is a scuffed Irelia gameplay, by the way. Not gonna lie. If you guys were focusing on this gameplay, this was really scuffed. But I have a really good Irelia gameplay, a chat Irelia gameplay coming up. Um this is coming out on Sunday. So the Irelia gameplay might come out for Monday or for Tuesday. Depends. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this guide, then definitely leave some feedback. What I could have done better, um, if I mess, uh, if I missed something, like maybe I missed an information or something that I didn't give to you guys. I mean, I'm not a mid lane main, but I think I have a good understanding on how you should play the mid lane or how I would play the mid lane. I think it's a very easy to play role, to be honest. Like, you don't have to think too much about stuff compared to Baron Lane. Hey, not gonna lie, Baron Lane and ADC solo queue are way harder. Like, way harder. Mid lane is pretty straightforward. Shove the wave, roam, gank, blah blah blah, you know. You know the deal. So, if you guys, my rating is... Jungle is not the easiest, but... The most impact, most impact, I'm talking about most impact first and then I'm gonna talk about what, what's the hardest and easiest. Most impact is jungle, mid lane, support, uh, baron lane, ADC. Or oh, actually, the, the issue about ADC is they're so reliant on support. If you have a bad support, you can't do shit, so it's gonna be, this is the order. Jungle, mid, support, baron, ADC. And what's the easiest role? In solo queue. Solo queue. I think... Uh, yeah, I would say... The hardest role is ADC in solo queue. Then Baron. Then jungle. Then support the mid lane. Mid lane is actually the easiest role. Maybe support depends. Actually, a good support. Uh, yeah, uh, now nah, mid lane is way easier. If you guys want to play, if you guys want to play good support, you need very good macro understanding. Obviously, you can just sit in the lane as an enchanter and do nothing. Then you can say this is the easiest role. But if you guys are a good support player. Macro, good macro understanding is key on the support. I think support is actually the second, the second easiest. Mid lane is the easiest. Jungle, you need very good macro understanding and matchup understanding as a uh, jungler. Same for uh, Baron. Baron that has the least impact, like one of the least impacts. You have very hard one versus one. You need to think about micro is very important and then also macro. I think Baron is definitely harder than jungle. If you if you have decent understanding on how to play the map as a jungler, it's very easy compared to Baron laner. Baron lane is much more complicated. Like micro stuff, freezing, wave management. People don't even know wave management, so how do you want to play jungle then? I mean, yeah, jungle is easier than Baron lane. But yeah, that's it for the guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I see you next time. Bye bye, Professor Breaker heads out. Welcome to the lecture. Fire spreading all around my room. My words so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.